and thank you for inviting me today. I feel um, slightly daunted, actually. I'm kind of I do a lot of public speaking, and um, but I always find coming before people in the community is both the most challenging, but also the most exciting and the most uh, 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 rewarding as well. Because in a sense, you are in the community, you experience things, you have the ability to change things. And I think that's obviously what the purpose of this is about. Um, so I want to spend a few minutes just talking about what is hate. Um, and then looking at some of the associated is issues. Now, my name's Nick Lowells. I'm the chief executive of Hope Not Hate. So in theory, I should obviously know what hate is. Um, I should know what hope is as well. Um, if you look in the dictionary, a definition of hate is an intense dislike of another person. Um, and, and obviously, there's many forms of hate where that's obviously clearly obvious. You know, um, a hateful attack on someone an unprovoked racist attack, homophobic attack, sexist attack, a physical attack. Um, clearly, we can all agree that is hate. Um, hate can also reflect, demonstrate it online, particularly these days, trolling, abuse, um, posting up stuff about people. Um, that is hate. Hate can also be in the newspapers. Um, it could be a hate against a community, it could be hate against an individual, it could be hate against a religious um, view or a political view or a lifestyle view. Um, but there's also, so there's, there, I, th I imagine there, there are things that we can all agree on on what is hate. And obviously if you look at the statistics, hate crime is going up in this country and it's particularly going up in, in London as well. Now, yes, there has been improvements in the way that police report hate crime, um, so that accounts for some of it. But I think that I feel, and certainly the evidence that we have shows that um, Britain is becoming a more divided society. And with that, there is a rise of hate. And that can be on an individual level, racist attacks, personal abuse in the street. It could be Politically, a rise of hate, people are becoming more angry and more aggressive towards each other as political parties or political ideas. It could be religious hate as well, um, hatred against, um, against a particular lifestyle. But one of the things that I found working at Hope Not Hate now, and I helped set up the organisation, um, well, we started using the name about 15 years ago, um, and I've been doing kind of anti-fascist, anti-racist work for nearly 30 years now. But one of the things that I found is that actually it's not always as simple as it might seem. There are clear manifestations of hate, but then there are also other areas where either more grey areas or where it's one person's perspective. Somebody's dislike to another person's ideas or another person's lifestyles can be freedom of expression. Where is the boundary bet between that? Where is the boundary between being free to have an opinion and that opinion encroaching on somebody else's freedoms? Where is the, and I think in increasingly polarized society where we see things in a very clear them and us attitude, very stark attitude, there's very little space for nuance, for um, disagreement, or even misunderstanding. What, what is hate and what is ignorance or lack of understanding? You know, we have stuff in newspapers. You know, it, it, you, unfortunately, we live in a world where most of the news is negative. So it could be, for example, in terms of the Muslim communities, most of the articles that you'll hear about the Muslim communities are quite negative. And so, of course, for someone who doesn't know some, um, Muslims or doesn't live near Muslim communities, it's, it's perhaps unsurprising that they form a negative perception. So how much is it their fault or how much is it what they've been, that they, they've been taken on? One of the things that our research has shown, that we do a lot of polling, a lot of data work, 
that is there is often a wide disparate a difference between reality and perception. So, for example, let's say on multiculturalism and in integration. When you ask people about their local communities, people generally think things are quite positive. People live together, you know, they, because people share the same sorts of lies and the same anxieties and the same issues. Not all the time, but, but, but generally. But you ask them about the country as a whole, and people have a very pessimistic view because of what they often read in the newspapers or see on the televisions. So I think when we try to figure out what is hate, it's also important to figure out what are some of the other issues that, that, that are, are, are related to that. And I know over the next few days, you're going to be going into these areas in a lot more detail. But I just want to kind of, through my work, just throw up some of the kind of complexities in trying to understand uh, or define hate. And there's been a couple of instances where we have been trying to f navigate our way through it. In, just in the last few, few, few weeks. Now, I'm an independent member of the government's anti-Muslim hatred working group. So we try to advise and support government to deal with Islamophobia, anti-Muslim hatred. Now, one of the big issues at the moment is, does the word Islamophobia exist? Can, you know, phobia of a religion. Now, many of us will argue that we need a definition of Islamophobia because unless you can define the hatred against Muslim communities, it's then harder to deal with it. But there are other people who say, but by um, you are curtailing freedom of speech. There are other people who will say, you are limiting the right to criticize a religion. We should all be allowed to criticize any religion that we want. So for me, it's not just simply you know, taking a view of the extreme ends of hate and how it manifests itself, but it's trying to find a balance between freedoms and responsibilities. So for me, when someone advocates hatred against somebody else and against a community, that is clearly hatred. If their purpose is to stir up and, and use um, demeaning languages or perceptions of people with the point of trying to get a bad impression of somebody else, that's, that is hatred. A difference of opinion is not necessarily hatred. And we need to be able to have space for that as well. Because one of the other things that I've learned at Hope Not Hate, you know, we primarily deal in what I guess the media or the political class will call white working class communities. Because in a way, that's often where the most difficult, where you've, you've had the rise of far-right extremism um, and hatred um, over the last few years. But often, one of the things that we've found is that um, in the course of our work, we need to take people on a journey as well. And I think that in defining hate and defining, you know, what is hatred and coming up with, with um, solutions to tackle hatred, we also have, have to understand where, why people have got to the position where they're saying these things. And I think that it's very easy to create a kind of them and us sit, sit situation. You've got good and you've got bad. And it's never quite as simple as that. And I think that often we find a direct correlation between economic pessimism and fear and hate of the other. The more unhappy we are with ourselves, the more unhappy we are about the people around us. And, and I'll, give, I'll give you an example of, I think, how we have to approach this. Because to me, ultimately, in defeating hate, it's about bringing communities together. So partly, it's about using the threat of hate, organized hate particularly. And I know in Walthamstow, you've had like the English Defense League and you've had kind of extremists coming into the community. So it's not just a question of, we don't like these people and we're, we're gonna say that. It's using that threat as an opportunity to say, we don't like these people because of the community we are. And that's a community, that's a strength in a community. And often we forget that actually the best 
the best strength, the best tool we've got to oppose hate and hatred is ourselves. We, in our lives, we can live lives individually and collectively as a community that, that can push hate out. So it's not just about kind of bureaucratic answers. Yes, we need the councils to do X and Y, and we need pol the police to do X and Y. But it's also about how we live our lives as well, how we treat each other. Often it's the small conversations, not just the big conversations. It's challenging hatred where we see it. And it's not just leaving it to the victims or the communities that are affected by hatred to deal with it themselves and feel isolated. Um, so I just, want to, um, I just want to kind of end by just, just mentioning a couple of things. I think that hate, we can define hatred and, and clearly you know, prejudice around race, around um, gender, about sexuality, about discrimination on religious grounds. Um, in a way, I, th I think are fairly easy to, to define within the confines of also allowing freedom of expression and freedom of speech. But also, I think we have to kind of balance out. We have to take people on a journey. Often people say things that, well, some people say things because they don't know any better. And we can't castigate people for saying the wrong word or the wrong thing. We need to be there to take, take people, we need to take people on a journey as well. Um, but, but ultimately, we have to challenge hate because hate corrodes communities. Obviously, for the, for, the, for the victims, for the targets of hate in particular. But a community that is divided is a community that is far less effective as well in dealing with the real issues that, that they face. And I think a community that is divided and individuals who are targeted by, 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 by hate means that they're not, you know, they're not... You, they're not operating to their full potential, either in the community or at work or at school. Hate can be such a miserable experience for those people who suffer it. Um, so I, I've, just, I've just been told to wind up. So I'll wind up here. Hopefully there'll be some questions. But um, as I say, you know, the answers, I think, the power you have are, is in the community. And Wolfenstow is a great example of that. Thank you.